Hello, and welcome to Tech Talk Community Conversations, the quarterly broadcast for, with Dr. Jill Bowen, Commissioner of the City of Philadelphia Department of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services, in which we explore the work DBHIDS and our partners do together to address the key components of tech, which stands for trauma, equity, and community. So now let's learn about tech. Dr. Bowen? Thank you, Mark. Hello, and welcome to Tech Talk Community Conversations, the quarterly broadcast. Um, that uh, Mark just told you about. We're very, very excited today to have Malcolm Musgrove here with us. Uh, this video series is very exciting for us. We explore how the work we do here at DBHIDS and along with our community partners and the provider network aligns to address trauma, achieve equity and engage community. So very, very happy to have Malcolm Musgrove joining us today. Um, Malcolm is the Vice President of Adult Behavioral Health at Meriki for Southeastern Pennsylvania. Meriki is a provider of developmental behavioral health and educational services to thousands of people in hundreds of locations across the country. And Malcolm has been helping to serve the people of Philadelphia for more than 21 years. So Malcolm, welcome. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your work here and how it aligns with the priorities of trauma, equity and community. Well, thank you, Dr. Bowen, for uh, having me here today uh, uh, and being a part of the uh, uh, Tech Talk. A uh, little bit about my experience and my background. I've been serving Philadelphia for over 30 years. Uh, and, uh, and in my role with Meriki, I've been um, uh, here for 21 years. Um, and when thinking about Philadelphia and thinking about um, uh, tech, uh, I, I, we are coming out of a uh, pandemic uh, that really has traumatized the country, uh, but most certainly has affected our city in, in, in a pretty significant way. Um, so uh, access to, to services um, in the city of Philadelphia is key and vital to our success uh, and, and coming out of this pandemic. Um, so when, when, when when thinking about this uh, um, uh, conversation and thinking about what we're doing at uh, at Meriki, uh, we are really uh, moving to um, a whole person care, uh, thinking about the entire individual uh, to include families um, uh, and um, uh, looking at uh, key areas, not just uh, the reason that they walk through our doors um, or, uh, or that they're uh, attempting to access us, but well, all the things that, that affect their lives. Um, uh, so uh, think about um, uh, their physical health, uh, their, uh, their mental health, um, if it's substance abuse, um, uh, social determinants of health, how we address all of the needs of, of that individual and, and their extended families, um, because uh, the, the, the trauma that affects them uh, typically um, um, affects the entire family. Or, or the uh, issues that are affecting them uh, and the reason that they walk through our doors are affecting their entire family. Uh, so really looking at whole person care is, is uh, what we are doing at, at Meriki. Uh, and Meriki has been around for over 50 years and, um, wow. and, uh, we, um, and we have had um, uh, vari various um, um, iterations of uh, thinking about how we provide services. And we're probably on uh, um, uh, 3.5 or 3.6 <laughs> at this point in time. Uh, um, but uh, uh, what we're doing now is really important work. And um, not only is, is Meriki thinking about it, I also belong to uh, three of the four trade associations of the city of Philadelphia, the Coalition of Cultural Competent Providers, the Coalition, uh, which is made up of our base service units and also the Alliance. Um, also, uh, they are thinking uh, in this way as well. Um, some of what we're doing um, that is really exciting and, and, and partnering with uh, uh, CBH and, and DBH IDS and thinking about these things, uh, really um, uh, reimagining how we're providing services to our community. Uh, our community is is really uh, uh, been been a pleasure. So um, uh, uh, right now we're looking at uh, uh, setting up healthy villages, um, uh, which is aligns with the uh, the whole person care, or or is, is the driver to get to whole person care. 
uh, where you can walk in and in our doors and you can um, uh, you'll have a primary care uh, physician. Uh, so let's there. talk about let's unpack that a little bit because that sounds very exciting to me. Maybe we can spend a, a few minutes on it. First of all, I just want to say that when what you're talking about, um, you know, you started with the pandemic and all of the trauma and of course the trauma of the pandemic itself and the um, you know the the isolation and the disconnection with community is so so powerful but we also know about multiple layers right so we're we're talking about that on top of so many of the social determinants drivers and the disparity um uh, you know among black and brown um folks that got heightened and and highlighted that was that was already there um and so when you talk about a shift in how to provide services you're really talking about system change, um, right? And you're looking at trauma as one of the um, sort of driving forces to try to address the things like social determinants. Um, and the idea of whole person health is so absolutely essential now, if you're gonna be, um, you know, if you look at tech in terms of trauma, equity, and community, you know, you're really putting your arms around it. So the Healthy Villages, which is, I, I think, um, sounds very, very interesting, would be really great, I think, for everybody to hear more about. And you're beginning to say, okay, this is how it works from a um, person that you're serving perspective. It'd be, be great for us, I think, to understand um, what you're attempting to do there and how how much of a service change this this actually is? So it, I, I believe that um, um, it, we, when we think about um, uh, how we provided services pre-pandemic, I, I think we were attempting to achieve um, uh, whole person care, but it, it, how we connect those dots uh, with um, uh, with various providers is key. So when I talk when I when I said healthy village, healthy village is really one stop shop. Uh, where you have the ability to come uh, to a um, a, um, a clinic uh, and you can see a primary care physician, you can see a mental health professional, uh, you can receive substance abuse services. Um, we'll address housing. We can address food insecurities um, and um, and and also a job readiness, vocational program. Uh, all of that under one roof, where you can move from levels of care or um, uh, different service types uh, with very warm handoffs um, that we are no longer making referrals and saying, uh, hey, go across town and, um, and uh, you can see um, um, X provider for this service, uh, service. We are under one roof. We walk you from one level of care to the next level of care, and then we follow up on that level of care to make sure that you are receiving those services. Um, not all of them will be under the same roof, but they all will be in the same community um, and, um, and, and partnering with those uh, um, agencies in a, in a uh, more, more substantial way, a more committed way. Um, almost uh, um, um, uh, creating uh, interdisciplinary uh, team of providers that are at the table serving an individual and a family's needs. So let's um, talk about this for a minute. Again, this is there's a lot that you said in there that sounds really interesting um, to me, and I imagine to to others. Um, the idea of co-locating or warm handoff of primary care mental health substance use. Um, has been around. I like the idea of um, very warm handoff. So I really want to understand that. The idea of pulling in things like housing, food insecurity, and job readiness, that really hasn't been done or done really well. Um, and, you know, they, first of all, by elevating that um, to a important part of the, you know, wellness of the individuals, um, is just uh, so is so important. There is no, um, there's, we have come to a place in this field where we know that um, people can't successfully reach behavioral health or wellness if they're the social determinants, the drivers, the poverty, the housing insecurity, the food insecurity um, is, 
is just um, pulling on them in such negative ways. So the if you don't facilitate success, um, you just won't you won't reach it, right? So I don't know what our expectations are if somebody is struggling um, with mental health or substances, um, and they they end up getting treatment and then go back out into poverty or homelessness, what are the expectations that they will continue to maintain health or wellness? Who, who isn't sort of traumatized by those kinds of um, experiences? So I really like this idea um, of integrating the way you are these social determinants. Um, I'm very curious about this very warm handoff and the follow-up that goes, a very good, a very warm handoff would require follow up right otherwise it's not really a, a good handoff right to know what has happened on the other end of you making um a really good solid helpful um referral but that follow up piece is so critical because we lose a lot of folks along these paths um as they are connecting um to sort of adjacent type services so so i, I really think that the the the, the mindset has to be um uh, this is my patient. This is my consumer. Uh, it, once I make the referral, um, you you still are, are belong to me, um, and and I belong to you until uh, we feel that you uh, uh, together have have received uh, the 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 kind of success that we are um, attempting to um, uh, to um, go on this journey with you. So um, making that referral doesn't end it. Um, it, it, once I've made a connection with you, I have to help you make the connection to the other services that you need. Uh, our belief is it, 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 that it, 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 it takes a lot of courage to walk through our doors. Um, and once you walk through our doors, uh, we have to help you get into other doors. Um, and, um, and it can't just be um, uh, you're making a phone call and, uh, for the referral. It has to be, we will go with you to the referral um, uh, and, um, and, and we will follow up with the referral source to make sure that they have, um, they've, they, that they have scheduled you or they have contacted you or they've lost contact with you, uh, how I can assist uh, with uh, um, uh, re-engaging you in that level of care. Um, so, great. So how uh, it is you really a team approach. Excuse me? Say that again. It, it, it really is a team approach. A team you approach. have to be committed yeah. uh, and you have to have the, the right um, uh, agencies that are going to partner with that you. That was my next question. Right. You're right on it. Okay. Oh, so yeah. It is a commitment. Uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you commit to the Healthy Village, you're committing to being a part of a team. Uh, not just your not just your agency or the service that you provide. Right. You are part of a team, um, and um, and and that team also has an obligation to meet and and discuss and talk um, uh, about um, uh, our consumers or our patients. Um, um, and uh, and once you commit to that team, um, uh, you are part of that village. You are part of the uh, ensuring that. Uh, we are um, providing holistic, whole person care um, to this individual so this and is, the family. So, okay, let's we'll talk about. And I think the family is key. Yeah. <laughs> but yours, so Merki is spearheading, and um, you're obviously very involved in the leadership around the this um, this effort, right? So, this is. Multiple partners, um, multiple provider partners um, to to come into the village, um, and I know it's metaphoric, but it actually feels um, like it makes a lot of sense, right? Um, yeah. You're you're putting a circle around these these services so that everybody together is working again, whole whole person health, and so you're making these connections, and so the the different providers, whether it's primary care um providers or housing um providers or job readiness uh providers um um or support around food insecurity are all joining this yes. village <laughs> yes 
So, so can you say a little bit about how you're doing it and, and what is your time frame for sort of scaling something like this up? So our, uh, our first village that we're looking uh, to, uh, to get off the ground is in the city of Philadelphia and it'll be at 27 East Mount Airy Avenue, um, which is the Northwest section of the city of Philadelphia. Um, and uh, there uh, we will be opening uh, our first FQHC um uh, which will provide the um uh the um uh, primary care um we already partner with um uh job readiness training program um and um and, and also um um uh healthy uh um food options um uh, and um and um uh, addressing the food insecurities, um, yeah, we we are, we are already doing that. We are looking for partners around uh, housing um, uh, for that location, um, and uh, we provide the mental health and the uh, substance abuse uh, also at that location. Uh, now, our substance abuse is is not on site, won't be on site, but it's only uh, uh, maybe a mile away, but they are partnering with us as well. Uh, and then uh, the community involvement. Um, so this is not just um, uh, the, the providers, uh, the community also uh, will have a, has a say in um, uh, what partners we will, we will ultimately have in our healthy village. Um, because it, it really it's about what the community see, sees as, as their needs. Um, so um, creating a, um, a uh, advisory board uh, for the healthy village that is made up of community members as well uh, is key to this um, uh, healthy village. Uh, but uh, this, is, this is something that we see as um, a way of um, uh, attempting to break down some of the, the um, uh, the barriers to um, uh, um, mental health, uh, behavioral health, physical health, and social determinants of health, um, and um, and and pro and not only healing the person, the family, but really talking about the community at large. Um, yeah, so, um, say some say some more about the family and how you're engaging the family. I mean, we know that trauma. Um, reverberates out into the family and then beyond into the community. Um, and say a little bit more about how you're engaging the family, recognizing that um, the family is impacted as a unit in addition to individuals who are impacted. So it, it, those are some of our, our key uh, questions that we're asked when, when you walk through the door. What does your support system look like? Who does that include? Mm -hmm. Would you like them to be involved in your treatment? Um, uh, would you, could you invite yeah. them to our, our, our next, uh, uh, session? Um, are there any needs with other needs within your, within the family? Um, are, are there children? Do the children need any supports? Um, and, uh, also building a, uh, a very comfortable, uh, environment for the family to come into, um, mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, at one of our locations, uh, our our uh, Parkside Recovery location, uh, we've built a um, a uh, a playroom. Um, so um, yeah, we know it's tough uh, for uh, you to come in, um, um, you know, multiple times a week sometimes. And and when you bring your, if you have to bring your children, we want to make sure that they are in an environment that's safe and 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 um, and uh, comfortable for them, but also comfortable for other members of your family. Um, so we're building these, um, um, we, we call them living rooms, um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. where you can come in and, and it looks like a living room and there's multiple things you can do. You can, you can if you, if you want to uh, uh, watch the television or if you want to pull out a game or if you want to read a book or whatever you want to do, you can come in, it's comfortable, it's nice, it's clean. Um, and, nice. and, um, uh, and it's inviting, um, cause it is tough to walk through our doors. We recognize. So it's welcoming. It's welcoming. very welcome. You're trying to break down the barriers for people, uh, the stigma, um, trying to break that down and be a welcoming sort of community 
place to come. I know we're we're running out of time, so I just wanted to ask you the the um, so you're going to start there in in um, in East Mount Airy, and then twenty seven East Mount Airy. We're then, looking at our our, our Parkside location on fiftieth yeah. and Parkside. Yeah. Um, our 265 East Lehigh location, we're looking at that location. Um, and, and, and these are all strategic um, uh, uh, locations for us um, right. um, because we, they're in separate sections of the city of Philadelphia. Right. One is in Northwest, one is in West Philadelphia, and one uh, sits in, in uh, North Philadelphia. Uh, so we're looking at strategic, uh, strategically looking at locations and the supports around those locations. Uh, so, um, uh, this is, um, uh, we, we are, we are excited about this. We really are. This, re um, this really and, is exciting and I'm feeling your excitement and I'd love to take a tour when you're, you're ready to, um, you know, d walk through with you and, and see the, the first location that you have. It sounds really exciting. So I know that we have to wrap, but, um, thank you so much for coming and talking with us about the vision, the, the whole person um approach through um the healthy villages um i do want to say that um, the statement that you made i actually wrote it down because i was i liked your statement which is that it takes courage to walk through our doors and we will help you get through other doors now if that doesn't align with tech trauma equity and community i can't uh, imagine uh what does and um so i do want to say thank you um Thank you, Malcolm, for, for your time today, for the work you do, for the people of Philadelphia um, and, and more widely in um, th throughout Pennsylvania. And, and uh, just let me say thanks to all for watching the DBH IDS Commissioner's um, Tech Talk Community Conversations. And the next one we will have will be in October when another guest will help us learn more about the important work that is going on in our communities um, with our partners to achieve to address trauma, achieve equity, engage community. And let me say, Malcolm, Malcolm Musgrove, you are a tech champion. Thank you. Thanks for having me.